I got to pick scent. <laughs> well, not fully. Like I have it, but I haven't had my first dose yet. It's gonna be in a few days. So I have it. I've secured it, <laughs> but it's not in my body yet. But I'm excited for it to be. This video is for the homies who are interested in getting Dupixin. There's not a lot of information out there. All of the information that I could find, I got from Reddit. There's a nasal polyp community on Reddit, which is super helpful. But there's not a ton of information regarding the process of actually how to get Dupixin. And I would love to make a video explaining what my process has been like in order to get to this point because there was a lot of confusion, there was a lot of mis misinformation, misguidance, and I just want to make it clear for people who are interested in getting on this medicine because it can be a long, tedious process and it's not always straightforward as to how to get here. So for a little bit of a background, I was diagnosed with chronic rhinosinusitis with nasal polyps um, almost 10 years ago now. Um, so I saw my family doctor, they referred me to an ENT, ear, nose, throat doctor, and um, they discovered that I had polyps. I was immediately put in for a surgery in 2017. Um, I had a surgery to remove the nasal polyps. My sense of smell came back for a few months, and then after that point, my sense of smell was completely gone again. So initially, when the surgery was finished, I thought it was worth it. But then a few months after my surgery, my nasal polyps started coming back until it's been seven years now since my surgery and my nasal polyps now are finally at the point again where I'm needing another surgery. Although Dupixent is a great alternative to surgery because you can either get surgeries for the rest of your life or you can be on Dupixent. Um, and I know my surgery was a really traumatic experience and I would really not want to go through that again and so I chose the Dupixent route and I first heard of Dupixent when I was in the nasal polyp community on reddit they're a super sweet community very helpful and there's a lot of good information there everyone just hypes it up they're like this medication changed my life I was able to smell within six days of taking it so a few years ago maybe three Three years ago or something I asked my old ENT because he was telling me that I needed another surgery and I was like look I've heard of Dupixent what do you think of me getting on Dupixent and he was like he was such an asshole he was like do you have insurance and I was like no and then he was like huh good luck getting that then I'll see you for your surgery like he he was such an asshole he abused me um emotionally and he hurt me physically and he didn't care and so I got the fuck out of his office and I never saw him again and I found myself a new ENT who is actually so sweet and so caring who actually listens to me and respects me and I asked my new and my new ENT like I'm interested in getting Dupixent and he was like okay I'll help you get on it and now I'm gonna have my first dose in a few days I think I brought it up to him last summer and he said it might take up to six months for me to get it. <coughs> Waiting on my insurance coverage was definitely the longest time consuming part. It's now been seven months since I brought it up with my ENT. It definitely goes faster if you already have a, a health insurance that covers Dupixin, but for me, I've never had any health insurance before so I was applying right from the beginning. The thing with surgeries is that it's getting rid of the nasal polyps, yes, but it's not getting to the root of the issue, which is inflammation within the body. The immune system doesn't like something that it's coming into contact with, and there's so much inflammation in the body that it's creating growths in in the airways and in the nasal passageways. So what Dupixin does is it 
targets closer to the root of the problem so it from my knowledge don't quote me on this i think it binds to some certain proteins that inhibits them and it stops the type 2 inflammation within the body um therefore decreases the inflammation in the body um whereas surgery it's like it doesn't really get to the root of the issue so you can get surgeries multiple times but unless the root issue is addressed that the polyps and the symptoms are just going to keep on coming back which is what happened to me you can try to get to the root of your issue by doing trial tests to figure out like what you're coming into contact with that your body doesn't like but this can take such a long time i tried to do this i tried to heal in the most natural way that i could i saw a natural path for two years and i spent thousands of dollars and i finally got to the point where she was like there's nothing else i can do to help you i'm sorry like everything we've tried has not worked and that's when i seriously started considering like either getting another surgery or getting to Pixent and it was a really tough time because I did really want to try to heal myself naturally through herbs and cutting things out of my diet but I actually did an allergy test and I was allergic to almost every single thing that they tested me for so at this point I'm just like allergic to the entire world my body hates everything and I think that's why I have this disease because my immune system is freaking out and it needs help to not freak out now getting into how to get on Dupixent now that I gave my little background story as I said I saw a new ENT who listens to me you know your body the best and there is no doctor who should be making your decisions for you um if your doctor is not respecting you and your choices or they're not believing you you need to go see a new doctor and you need to find one who understands you and believes you and actually wants to help you so as i said i told my new ent that i wanted to get to Pixent, and he was like okay i'm gonna hook you up with the freedom support program dupixent is an expensive medication in canada it's thirty thousand dollars a year obviously the average person cannot afford that so they have dupixent my way in the united states and in canada it's called the freedom patient support program what they do is they help you pay for dupixent god God bless the Freedom Support Program and the Dupixin people for actually, like, helping people get on this medication because if it wasn't for, like, the Dupixin people being generous and helping people afford it, like, the amount of people on this medication would be extremely tiny and we would all just be out here suffering. So, what the Freedom Support Program did is I got assigned a case manager and what she did is she helps me along my Dupixin journey and she helps answer all of my questions and guides me along the process and this is where some confusion came in because she did not really explain things to me as well as she could have and that led to a lot of confusion on my end as to like what type of insurance I'm supposed to be getting. My case manager said I had to get an insurance that covers 50% or more of Dupixent. And I was like, okay. So I was talking on the phone with insurances, emailing people who worked for insurance companies. I was like, do you know if this insurance company covers 50% or more of this medication, which is $30,000 a year? And they were like, um, of course not. That's way too much. No insurance is going to cover that much. And so it, it, it led me to a lot of confusion as to how, the, how am I supposed to find an insurance company that covers $15,000 or more of medication a year? it was like impossible and it was like really stressful and then i asked my case manager like can you give me the names of the insurances that cover dupixent and she gave me sun life manu life and there was another one i think it's like green green something and i had heard someone on reddit they had good 
experience with Sun Life, so that's what I decided to go with. So I got the Sun Life Enhanced Plan, um, which is $99 a month. And because I had never had any health insurance before, it took them seven months to approve my application which is just ridiculous <laughs> so that's not Dupixon's fault that is Sun Life's fault that I had to wait for so long but they finally approved me um for my health insurance and then I called my case manager back and I told her when I had my insurance seven months later we called the insurance together and we did a three-way call and they just got to know more about my insurance plan we confirmed that Dupixent is covered on it and this is what I heard on the phone I'm not too sure because they were using a lot of big words I couldn't really understand what they were talking about but the lady from Sun Life on the phone said that Dupixent is covered 80% by Sun Life Like, I think, I don't know, this is, like, where all the confusion came from. Because I was emailing Sun Life and I was like, do you cover Dupixent 50% or more? And the people I was talking to, they always said no. But I think maybe they just don't have the understanding. Um, I think somewhere in Sun Life's medication that they coverage, Dupixent is listed and so you, you just have to go off of that and as soon as you get the insurance you can get booked in for your loading dose. Also I forgot to mention there was a bunch of stuff I had to do in order to prove to Dupixent that I needed it. For example you need to like you need to essentially be able to prove to Dupixent that you need the medication so i know for nasal polyps you need to have at least one surgery and then your nasal polyps have to like come back to prove that like hey the surgery didn't work so you have to have at least one surgery i had to see a, a breathing doctor for my asthma um get my lungs tested and then I had to get an allergy test and then I had to get a CT scan, I think it's called, for my sinuses to show how bad my, my nasal polyps are. And I think that was it. With all of that information, um, they send it off to your ENT, they send it off to your Freedom Support Program who sends it off to Depixend. It's like you have the support of people around you who help you through the process, which is really nice. As soon as you have the insurance, you can go into the clinic to learn how to do your injections. So they booked me in in about a week and a half. And my first injection now is going to be in a few days. So I am nervous because I'm really not good with needles. But I just know that it's going to be so worth it because I'm so sick of feeling this way. I'm so sick of being in pain. I'm so sick of my daily life being interrupted. Like, I haven't been able to smell a single thing for going on seven years now. I've known my partner for seven years. And as long as I've known him, I've never smelled him before. Like, how weird is that? And it, it really just affects your everyday life it affects you not only physically but emotionally as well and you really don't like you wouldn't probably be able to tell from looking at me that i have a chronic condition but i guess you wouldn't really understand it unless you have nasal polyps yourself it's it's obviously not the worst disease out there but it's still valid um because it is affecting your everyday way of life. I'm really looking forward to my first injection. I'm gonna let you know how it goes. I am nervous, but I'm more so just excited because I've just been wanting this medication for so long. And I could just cry tears of gratitude because this medication exists and I know that it's gonna help me feel so much better and i'm just looking forward to it so so it's an injectable medication that you inject every two weeks and then depending on how your symptoms play out and how 
um, you begin to heal up, um, your dosage may lower to once a month or maybe once every two months. Um, but I've just heard great things of like people being able to smell after only their first dose. So I'll let you know how, how my first injection goes. Wish me luck. It's been a month since I last filmed that. Um, and that's because I went for my first dose and it didn't go so well, so I had to reschedule it. So my first dose was actually a few days ago. So I will just explain how my experience went. As someone who has trypanophobia, um, which I didn't even mention in the first half of this, um, because kind of like my Dupixin experience made me realize that like I actually have trypanophobia. So trypanophobia is a fear of needles in the medical setting. Um, all right, so the days leading up to my Dupixin training injection, I was looking up a lot of things on the internet, people's experiences, what the injections are like, the side effects and it really freaked me out and was causing me so much anxiety. I was reading things where people, this one person they said they injected it into their leg and it hurt so bad that they nearly passed out and a lot of people were saying how painful the injection is. If the side effects of people sharing their bad experiences is going to prevent you from getting your Dupixin injection, then just try to stay away from looking up as much stuff as possible. My first um, training appointment didn't go so well. Like I said, I was very anxious. It, like the second I stepped in the room, I started crying. <laughs> Already that's a sign that it's not going to go well. I should have just left, but I was there for an hour. Um, and I think the thing that got me is I thought for some reason that I was going to be getting the pen, but I got there and it was the syringe and the nurse was showing me the needle. She was like, this is how big it is. And as someone with trypanophobia, I don't want to know those details. I don't want to see the needle. I don't want to look at the needle. I don't want to have anything to do with the needle. And so her just showing it to me and showing me how it works and... It was freaking me out and I was expecting to get the pen where the needle is hidden inside. With the syringe, that shit is out there in full fullness. I was just so anxious that I was hyperventilating and I was getting a headache. So I had to just leave the appointment without even getting it done. So I booked my next injection training appointment two or three weeks later i got in contact with the freedom support program and i told them that i i told my case manager that i wasn't able to get the injection done and that the syringe was freaking me out and i told her about my fear that i have and i said i would feel more comfortable with the pen so um freedom support program got in contact with sun life my insurance and they gave me the pen and that was so sweet of them my second injection training appointment my partner went with me for both because i obviously don't feel comfortable enough to inject myself so they taught my partner how to do it um and this appointment i felt a lot more calm already it could be that maybe it was just a better time in my cycle um i was already just feeling more calm and more at ease maybe it's that i just kind of knew more of what to expect i knew that it was going to be the pen the pen was just like right out of the fridge so i actually had to sit there for half an hour with the pen between my legs to like warm it up um and after that we went ahead and did the injection so my partner did it for me um i accidentally said the f word but the pain was not nearly as bad as i was making it seem in my head it literally took five seconds i saw my partner hovering over me with the needle i closed my eyes i closed my <laughs> i closed my ears and five seconds later he was sitting on the chair next to me and the nurse was walking away and i'm like 
it's done already and it literally took only five seconds so i would say it it stung a little bit and that probably lasted three to five seconds and then it was gone and then i just kind of had to get over the fact that there's liquid inside of my leg that my body has to do its thing with it was just so much easier than i expected it to be and and my partner asked me like what I would give the pain out of a 10 and I gave it a 4. It was not painful at all and now that I know what it's like, I'm like, I'm going to be able to do it every two weeks. Especially with my partner there supporting me and doing it for me, I think I will be fine. My leg was sore for the first two days. The area where the injection went in, an inch all around the injection site was pretty sore kind of like if you have a large bruise it kind of felt like that the first two days my thigh was pretty sore after that i think so i got it done on tuesday and now it's friday like um my leg still has a tender spot on it but it's pretty good so that's been my dupixin experience so far i feel like a whole new woman <laughs> Now that I overcame my fear and that I'm finally on the medication that I've been wanting to be on for years and I'm just like, screw you to my old ENT who laughed at me when I said I wanted this medication, I'm on it now and so far I'm not experiencing any side effects so that's good. And yeah, if you have any questions about Dupixent or the process on how to get it, um, just let me know down below and I'll be sure to answer your questions. And yeah, thank you for watching this video. I hope that it helps um, on your own Dupixent journey.